In today's headlines, a Supreme Court ruling has revealed that 13 people arrested in the Urewera terror raids were discharged because police gathered their evidence illegally. Charges were dropped against 13 people on Monday because police had carried out covert filming in 2006 and 2007 without search warrants. The Police Association says an urgent law change is needed after the ruling, saying that police have no legal authority to use video surveillance to gather evidence. President Greg O'Connor says the law hasn't kept up with technology. One lobby group says the recommendation to slow down the phasing in of the emissions trading scheme falls short of what's really needed. The Greenhouse Policy Coalition lobbies against the ETS on behalf of major emitters. Executive Director David Venables says the moderating provisions to roll over until the global economy improves, especially because international negotiations on carbon pricing have pulled back. But a Victoria University environmental expert believes the compromises would put New Zealand behind the rest of the world. Associate Professor Rafe Chapman says if we delay and phase in the agriculture, energy, transport and industrial sectors, we won't reach our mid-century target of halving emissions. Free trade negotiations with Russia could get a boost next year. Our Prime Minister met with Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Zhukov ahead of the Russia-US game in New Plymouth last night. John Key says our economies could do more together with dairy exports on our side and oil exploration for Russia. An FTA with New Zealand would be Russia's first with a developed country. A European Central Bank is joining with the U.S. Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan and the Swiss National Bank to lend U.S. dollars to banks short on the currency. Some European banks have had trouble borrowing the greenback because the American funds that normally lend to them have backed off from the Eurozone debt crisis. Four men are trapped in a mine in southern Wales after a tunnel collapsed, causing water to flood into the mine. Rescuers say the air supply is good and the men are experienced, and they remain hopeful they are all right. The Welsh rugby team in New Zealand has sent messages of support to the families. And finally, Hamilton is fired up for its weekend of international rugby action. After tonight's All Blacks vs Japan game, Waikato Stadium sees Wales play Samoa on Monday. Mayor Julie Hardacre says there's no chance of repeating Auckland's mistakes, partly because Hamilton has no trains and no waterfront, with the Waikato River well away from the festivities. Well, that's it from the Shine TV newsroom. Have a great weekend. Pumarie.